Hi, welcome to Andrew Buckle comic review of, well, Jason Drum. Not really of Tintin. I'm not going to go through Tintin. But this is issue 202. Now, this was 1979. It doesn't weirdly say on the cover the year. July 1979. Very odd. But still, so from Belgium, Canada, Spain, etc. It wasn't available in the UK. Obviously, it's in French. But the reason I got it, Jason Drum, a character I didn't know anything about a couple of weeks ago. And you can see from the artwork straight away who it's by. Gil Kane. The brilliant Gil Kane. I love Gil Kane's work. And it's got here, so there's the summary of all the various stories there. And you've got Tintin, etc. And you've got Gil Kane there. And it's just a bit about, obviously, Black Mark, etc. Doesn't actually mention anything particularly about the, the story itself, which is very unusual. But still, it does mention about Black Mark and Starhawks. Actually, I haven't got Starhawks. One of those ones I've never bought. Maybe because I've never seen a collection that I've been particularly happy about. So, uh, but maybe put a comment saying, oh, yes, that collection is much better than this or that collection. I think there's been a couple of versions of it and oh, I just haven't got it. So I've got loads and loads of other works of Gil Kane. I've got, I love the Gil Kane books. I've got the red and blue book that came out of Gil Kane. Of course, there's also some interview book with Gil Kane that's just brilliant. I think I've done a review of that. And this one, Jason Drum, all you got really here is that there's a moon landing. Obviously, Jason Drum, the character there, and Gil Kane. Moon landing, he lands. And as always, of course, with Gil Kane, there's always great faces. Always those sort of faces. You immediately know Gil Kane. Will. And also that sort of scene. That's quite standard. I love it. Very much like Warlock. There's a lot of that sort of Warlock. That sort of... In fact, when you first saw it, this scene here, I thought of Warlock. It just looks like Warlock. And of course, you've got all the big faces there. Always brilliant. Suddenly, of course, he's transported, he disappears, and you've got the surprise. Jason Drum, astronaut, and you can see, obviously, ah, oh, on the face. And he's transported in the dramatic scene, as usual. The colours are great. And that's always I love about some of these the French magazines. The colours are always superb. And, of course, if they ever do reprint them, obviously, hopefully, they reprint them with those sort of beautiful, oversaturated colours that they seem to do in here. And the greens, I love the greens. There's nothing better than that. And also, mysterious, there's obviously some woman there who I assume, maybe issue 203, 204, etc. And also, possibly, some book that was done in France. I found nothing much about it, but just a, one picture showing a book. I have no idea what's in it. I think it's, it's, it's about 44 pages, maybe. Maybe it's more than that, I don't know. Maybe it's the full story. I don't know if it finishes, whether there's a... Was ever going to be a volume two or what, there's more of it? I don't know. I don't know if it continues in 203, 204, 205 of Tintin. This is all I can see. When I do a search for Tintin and uh, this Jason Drum, this is the only issue that seems to really pop up. But I love the, uh, that's just great, that scene. And of course, he mysteriously, like John Carter, very much feels like John Carter. And you can see, obviously, I love it's that waterfall there, just brilliant. And he goes in there sort of a drink of water. I'm not saying that's a great idea. Once you've sort of, well, I suppose, you maybe think, oh, you know what, I'll have some water on a mysterious planet. you no idea what that water's like. And, of course, there may be some creature in that suddenly pops out and eats you. Or maybe there's lots of weird creatures in the water that eat you from... Anyway, don't want to get into... Obviously, I sit there and think about all these problems that maybe, possibly could happen. But still, it comes across, obviously, some aliens there. I assume they're obviously... And you know you're on, a, obviously, outside the solar system because, of course, it's not Mars. Because you've got two suns. It'd be very odd if there were, or maybe of course there were two suns in the solar system at some other point. Maybe he's transported back in time. A bit like John Carter. But still, you've got him here surrounded. Then, as of course, what happens? They throw him some clothes. And I just love, I mean, just the artwork's always just great. I mean, you can't beat. I love the blue, very strong. I mean, look at that, that blue and red. Just perfect. I mean, it doesn't need any more. I mean, blue, red, you really know the foreground. And that character just at the back there, just blue, just brilliant. But he throws some clothes to him. And I love the fact that the clothes fit perfectly. As if they were carrying, just luckily, some clothes that just fit him. And he's a really tight fit as well. <laughs> just, but perfect fit. Now, the weird thing is, there's a scene here where he's fighting this, this I don't know, some sort of monster or snake or something, or serpent. And he hasn't got any clothes on at that point. So I'm thinking, was that scene, obviously something happening in the future, but why was that scene? Because, of course, clearly now he's got some clothes. Maybe he doesn't have clothes later on in the story. 
the rest of the magazine is quite decent. It's got a reasonable selection of stories. None of them I'm particularly familiar with, but it's still pretty good. And some other little articles and things. Not really much information particularly. Obviously, you've got next week, but it doesn't say anything particularly. There's nothing, no mention about Jason Drum, so I don't know if it's going to feature that or not. You've got this lovely poster at the back or picture there. And that's it for Jason Drum. Again, just main reason I got this, Gil Kane. I love Gil Kane's work. I think he's just one of the... I wish Marvel would bring out a massive collection of all his brilliant covers because he produced thousands, well, probably 500 or so. I haven't counted them. But lots and lots of covers by Gil Kane and, of course, other work as well. But that would be brilliant. Of course, all the work he's did for DC will be great to see, as well as much, much more. There should be a lot more. And there should be some thick volumes of massive sort of Gil Kane books. There's art of Wally Wood. There's art of this person, that person. But Gil Kane, there's really not that much. And it's really quite pissy because I think one of the best for me, obviously lots and lots of that, Jack Kirby and things. Great. I love Jack Kirby. But Gil Kane, I think, is superb and really, really, there should be a decent collection of his work now available, as well as, again, like I say, all the covers, even if they're in maybe four a page kind of thing, something like that. Still, who knows? Maybe that will happen. But Jason Drum, maybe at some point we might get a complete printing of this if it's available. Again, can't say. There are a few articles online, so you can search those out and find out a little bit more about it. And it does mention about Fantagraphics. So possibly, if you're interested, you of course contact them and say, bring out Jason Drum. So totally recommended. Brilliant French magazine, Tintin 202, 1979.